All right, everyone. So you have your, you know, let's call it your five thousand dollar, you know, per month accounts. We ran plenty of those, you know, in our, you know, our days here at Propellant Media. And then you have accounts that you run where you're spending close to a hundred thousand per month. Um, and you know, a lot of times individuals, yeah, you may be running a hundred thousand dollar account, but it's just so much. It's so much to manage. And you're trying to figure out how can I do a better job managing a hundred thousand dollar per month or more account effectively. Um, and so this is really what this conversation is all about: how to become both well organized, but also how you do some setup on the front end. So we're going to go through some of these recommendations, and, and hopefully this serves you all really, really well. So the first thing. I know it sounds simple, right? I know that everyone that's out there, you probably do do some of this, but I can't tell you how many folks just create a campaign and just let it ride. Start with a plan, and I want to say that a well-structured plan. When you're consulting with the client, when you're consulting, if you're like a brand manager, you're consulting internally within the organization, you want to think about what are the services, what are the products that we're promoting, you know, you want to think about the timing, the infrastructure. Maybe there are certain deadlines that you have to think about. All of that needs to go into your plan. Um, because a lot of times, if you're running a $100,000, you know, call it a $100,000 account, per month account, you're probably going to have at least 5 to 20 campaigns that you're running. Because you're trying to get as much out of that ad budget as possible. And the way you get as much out of that ad budget is by having very singular and very targeted campaigns as well as you know single keyword ad groups and, and ads and things of that nature, of course. But got to create a plan. It has to be a full media plan that's in an Excel doc, whatever, whatever document system you use that gives perspective on spend, on you know, you know, what's going to go to each line item of your campaign. All of that's really going to matter, and you have to do that from the front end. So that's the first thing. Second... This actually matters just as much as the first point. Your naming convention needs to be impeccable. Don't create a naming convention infrastructure that just says campaign FB underscore start date, blah, 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 blah. Like you need to have your campaign naming infrastructure make sense. So when you're looking at reporting, when you're looking at how your campaigns are running, you're able to spot check stuff a whole lot more quickly than having to figure out, well, what's this campaign about or what's this for? So if you're a personal injury attorney and you're spending $200,000 a month on, on PI attorney stuff and you got motorcycle, you have, you know, let's call it um, personal injury attorney is more of a branded term, right? Maybe you're also doing, you know, car accident, track, truck accident. Um, you want to put truck accident in the campaign name. And all of the keywords that's associated with trucking accidents and as single keyword ad groups can then go into that campaign. But you, you need to make sure that you're doing a good job with your naming convention. Sometimes people just put random acronyms and it, it just does not serve you well when you're trying to manage effectively $100,000 or per month account or more. So that's really important. Um, as I was mentioning earlier, I said start with a plan, but also work from a media plan that you can reference on a monthly basis. For many, um, many brands out there, and one that just comes to mind is uh, higher education. We do a lot of work in the higher education space. We always have a monthly media spend that's being associated with, with, that, with those different departments. And so if, if, if you're able to then tie in uh, the media plan back to your campaigns and your campaign naming conventions, you're able to make comparisons as to how your pacing, how your spend is going from that standpoint. So that's, that's super important as you're going through that process. A lot of folks rely on scripts. Um, I personally do not. I think scripts can, can hurt you long term um, because it causes us to be lazy and not inject the human element in managing Google ads campaigns. Um, so there's a lot of different scripts that you can, you know, create, like if your click through rate is over 5%, then, you know, split test this other thing. Or if your click through rate falls below 2%, pause that ad and then, you know, you know, inject this new, you know, creative or copy into this ad. It's all types of scripts that you can create. And there are some that actually are really, really good that we do recommend from time to time. And maybe we'll do a separate video on that. But in this case, if you're running a $100,000 per month account, don't initially rely on, and maybe that's the right word. Let me let me sort of change that around. 
do not initially rely on scripts. Maybe you wait, uh, let's say two to three months to inject scripts, but don't start with scripts. It's really a bad idea because you don't really know the performance or how the campaign is running if you do that. Um, but, but do take advantage of alerts. And so there are different alerts that you can create where if you go over a certain budget or if you see a keyword that's really kicking butt or if you see an ad that's performing really, really well, you just want to have some alerts that are set up, some ones that are really, really important that informs you of some, some actions that you need to take over the next week or over the next few days. Um, a, there's a lot of different reporting systems that have alerts, but also directly in the Google Ads platform, there's plenty of alerts that you can set up so you receive that heads up on how things are performing. Um, so I can imagine that if you are a PI attorney, just kind of going back to the personal injury attorney example, there's no way that you are not measuring conversions. I don't, whether it's phone calls, you know, chat bot engagements, form submissions, maybe some micro conversions like button clicks or someone that may have watched, you know, 50% of your video. You need to track all that and you need to assign values to each of those. And the reason why that's important is if you're, if you're, if you're measuring a lot of different conversions, you want to put yourself in a position where you can assign values to each of those conversions across all those campaigns. So not just phone calls, not just form submissions, even if you're doing button clicks, measure all that stuff. Because eventually when you're trying to segment performance and look at campaign performance, you're gonna to wanna to see which ones are giving you the highest value, let's call it. And that's why we discussed that, that part of it and why it's so important is you're trying to manage, manage many of those different types of campaigns. Um, so that's super, super important. Um, as we mentioned before already, a tightly well-structured campaigns based on product, service, or category. As I was mentioning before, if you're a trucking attorney, I'm sorry, if you're an accident attorney, you may have you know trucking accidents, uh, let's call it motorcycle accident. You may also have um, trucking personal injury. Those are three separate campaigns. And so... If you've done a good job with the naming conventions, if you sign dollars you know, per day that gets spent across each of those, now you're able to see their performance across each of them versus I create one campaign, I put all of my keywords in that, even if they're single keyword ad groups, I still put all of them into one campaign. That's not a best practice. Don't do that. You need to have, in this case, if you have a $100,000 per month uh, account, there are certain cases where it does make sense, but... If you, if you use that rubric of product, service, and category, then you're going to naturally have to build out at least four to 20, you know, campaigns, um, you know, and it really depends on the scenario, but you're going to have to build out a number of campaigns, but it's going to give you so much more control and get, and put you in a position um, to, you know, you know, create really well-structured campaigns that are spending over a hundred thousand dollars a month. One thing that we also do is that, um, Within the whole conversation around different campaigns, we'll have a brand campaign, a non-brand campaign, and then also a competitor keywords campaign. So, you know, up here, you know, I think we were, I think I did a Google search. Yeah, here we go. So I might have a, uh, like a, a uh, how do I say it? I might have a competitor's campaign that targets these keywords, like Montlick and Associates, um, for the people, Morgan and Morgan, those kinds of terms. And then I might have a brand. If, like, let's say if Morgan and Morgan is my, is my client, Morgan and Morgan would have its own brand campaign, but then we would also go after these others. And then for those non-branded keywords like personal injury, accident attorney, those kinds of terms, those would get, those would fall into sort of the non-brand bucket, if you will. We do that often. It gives you just, again, we're trying to put ourselves in a position to manage our campaigns with quicker velocity, with not making a ton of mistakes. And when you do that, you're able to see the overall performance of your campaigns a whole lot, much more quickly than you would have um, if you were lumping a lot of things into just one campaign effectively. Uh, let's see here. What else? Um, track and, uh, keep track of impression share. Super important as well. Because if you know your impression share, and again, that's uh, for those who don't know, think of it like a market demand or a market cap type of situation where, 
you know, that will tell you out of 100 impressions you showed up for, you were eligible to show up for 50. So that means you're at a 50% impression share. You want to see their performance of impression share on a per campaign basis. If you do that, um, if you did that in just one campaign, we were lumped everything into that just one campaign, it would not be good in terms of tracking. Um, and so you can then share with the client that if this one campaign is doing really, really well, like your cost per conversion is super, super low, and your present share is like 30%, the client, you can tell the client like, hey, we could actually double our budget here um, and still perform at par or relatively well. That's, you know, there's, there's some nuances there, but that's why when you're you know, trying to manage these large accounts, have them broken up and looking at the impression share at each campaign level is really important. Um, as I've mentioned, the other thing too is we do like to throw in, in a case, if you're, if you're managing a $100,000 per month account, we like to throw in one or two you know, Google Display campaigns. So you may have one where you're targeting people who are in market. You may also have a retargeting campaign. All of those initiatives are incredibly important. Um, but again, make sure that your name and conventions are proper. Um, so that's super important as well. And then last but not least, tap into bid strategies often. Um, you know, back in the day, just managing, you know, manual CPC bid strategies was fine. Google has gotten way, way better over the years in their ability to target the individual user based on their intent. So normally for us, we'll start off with uh, max conversions. Um, and for those who don't know what I'm referring to, so what we'll do many times is we'll go over here to, uh, let's see here, I might have to make a couple tweaks, but typically we'll go to max conversions, um, then we'll switch over, here, let me try to go back. So we'll first we'll start off with max conversion bid strategy just remove this and then we'll switch over to a, um, a max conversion value from time to time then we'll move over to a CPA bid strategy and then finally there are opportunities where you can leverage ROAS as a bid strategy as well all of them have their own use cases but you cannot do any of that if you're not measuring conversions and that goes in with having having a strategy around measuring your micro and your macro conversions um, Gang, at a high level, that, that's how we ma manage campaigns. I mean, I could talk about single keyword ad groups, you know, going to your, 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 your search terms reports, you know, on a daily basis and just doing an effective job. I mean, that's just standard blocking and best practice type stuff, right? But if you want to do a really, really good job managing a $100,000 per month account, if you're doing those things and you're checking it daily on a regular basis, making the proper tweaks, you're going to be off to the races, but man, those naming conventions, I can't tell you how important that is. Um, so everyone, thanks for taking the time. Really appreciate it. Hope to talk to you soon. Take care.